All right, guys, so we are getting ready to flash another tune for this thing and take it out and take it for another ride. Uh, I didn't really stop to talk to the camera in between the pulls that we just made that you guys had seen. And the first one, obviously, we were shifting super low, I think like mid 4,000 RPM. And then the second one, we went out and we shifted around 5,300. This one, we're gonna be shifting at 6,000 and we're gonna be turning on the meth system for the first time. This is what we're using. We're using Boost Juice. Um, I've personally never used meth before. Um, it seems to be a good alternative to E85 and uh, high octane fuels, at least for the street. In the Hellcat, we run Ignite E90, and so we really don't have a need for methanol. But with this setup, we're trying to keep it so that we can go to any gas station anywhere, take it for long cruises, stuff like that. So I think methanol is gonna be a good option for us. Not sure if you guys seen in a previous video, but we have the AEM methanol kit. And the way we're running it is we have one nozzle right under this pipe here. And that's just what we're gonna run for now. I think we're gonna be going to a two or three nozzle setup, but for now we're just gonna run the standard. I think this one's a V2 kit from AEM. So let's go ahead and fill up the boost juice. We'll flash the tune and then we'll go take this thing for a ride. I do have the methanol turned on. Um, well, not turned on, I have it set. We're gonna have it come on and start spraying at seven and I want it to full spray at seven. Um, that's what the tuner wants us to do for the first time logging with it. He just wants it to all come on at once. Um, I've got my switch ready, so we're gonna make a hit without it and then we're gonna flip the switch and we'll make another one with it. So now that we're connected to the vehicle, start scanning. Gonna go ahead and start this thing up. All right, let's go take this thing for a ride. We blew a boot off. I think we touched rev limiter for a second there guys and uh, when we did I think it blew the boot scared the living crap out of me honestly guys at first I thought we uh, I thought we blew it up already I'm gonna kill this real quick guys and then we'll go take a look at what we got all right guys you probably can't see it but it's just like I thought maybe you can't see it down in there but uh, we blew the boot right off the blower Spinning this thing as hard as we are, I'm not very surprised. I'm gonna get a better clamp and we will try it again. 
Um, all this piping is going to get remade over the winter when the car's sitting anyways. It's just kind of like a jumbled mess of what I had laying around to get this thing to go down the street. So it is working for now, but we're going to be remaking uh, everything from the blower all the way to the throttle body out of some nice polished aluminum. I've got a nice new Black Sheep Industries blow-off valve that we're going to be putting in like right here so we can get rid of the Pro Charger bypass valve. And uh, we'll basically be redoing all of it. I'm going to try to do bigger piping and I'm also going to try to do less rubber so that we can do like v-bands or something like that and try to make it as few pieces as possible so i'm gonna go ahead and put this thing away i'm gonna order some clamps tonight and we will get back on it when the clamps come in all right guys so the last time we drove this car um we were data logging it and i took you guys for a ride and we blew the boot off the bottom of the pro charger down here this one here we had a kind of a cheap crappy clamp on that thing so we went ahead and put a better t-bolt style clamp on it i actually ordered a whole bunch of them and we tried to switch out as many as we could there's still a few that we didn't that i think are going to hold for now because over the winter we're going to be redoing all of the charge piping with aluminum we're going to tig weld it up use v-bands where we can and make it all nice and clean looking so for now we're just going to run with that but the tuner also let me know that he did see another issue in there uh, if you see in the video there, it almost seemed like I hit rev limiter before the boot blew off. Well, rev limiter was set at like 6,000 RPM and it started uh, breaking up like that around 5,300. So we're not sure exactly what happened there. He said that it seems like it went lean uh, pretty abruptly, like immediately. So we're not sure if we're losing fuel pressure for some reason. Um, with these ECMs, you can't log fuel pressure through the factory computer at least the way it's set up right now we do have a fuel pressure gauge but it's on the regulator so you can't see it when you're driving so we're going to try to do something about that i might order an in-car uh, fuel pressure gauge but for now what he suggested doing we were at three eighths of a tank but we're going to go ahead and throw five gallons uh, more it's just pump 93 i use those jugs for 85 that's why they're that color but we've got 93 in it right now so we're going to go ahead and put five gallons more in the car and see if that changes anything the way that we have the pump set up if you guys are uh following the channel if you're subscribed and stuff you will see that we posted a video a while back when we did the full fuel system on this car and we modified the stock basket to put a walbro 525 pump in there and it actually just sits at the bottom of the tank we deleted the venturi system so there's no bucket or anything like that that it could be sucking dry so it's just drawing directly from the tank and the stock tank does have baffles in it so i wouldn't think that when we're floored and in those higher RPMs that the fuel is running away from the pump enough for it to suck air or anything like that. But because we're not 100% positive, we are gonna throw more fuel in it and give it a shot and see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the fuel in it. Then we'll set up the data logger. We'll get the camera set up and we'll take this thing for another ride and see what happens. So the speedos are definitely reading off from each other. And this one's wrong too, because it says I'm doing 20. I'm doing at least 30, yeah. That's weird. I'm doing 20 on this one. It's like it only reads up to a certain spot and then that's all it'll read. Like at low speeds, it seems to read pretty close to accurate. Something feels weird. 
at the drive shaft or drive line. It's like I can feel something moving when I. I'm gonna pull it up on the lift when we get back. Well, we didn't get to test the meth because I didn't want to make a hit with that cop right there. So we're gonna send them the log of no meth. And then it seemed like AFRs were good. I think I hit the rev limiter again, but my tack didn't seem to line up. So I'll set my shift light a little earlier next time. Um, other than that though, it seemed like it ripped pretty good. When we first started tuning, the tuner wanted us to do some lower RPM pulls up to like 3,500, then 4,500, and so on and so forth. Well, once we got up to about 5,500 5, RPM, um, we were having some issues with it breaking up. We're not sure if it's the rev limiter kicking in earlier than he has it set for, or if we're actually dropping off fuel pressure. I don't think that it's fuel pressure because I think we have plenty of fuel pump. Uh, we definitely have plenty of injector to support what we're trying to do here, especially on pump gas right now. But we're gonna go ahead and hook up a fuel pressure gauge to this thing. We've got one at the regulator right here, as you can see. But when you're driving the car down the road, you obviously can't see that. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a mechanical style gauge for now so that I can keep an eye on it and see if the fuel pressure is actually dropping off. So if you guys aren't already, please think about subscribing and ringing the bell. It'll keep you guys up to date on any videos that we put out with the GTO, the Duramax, and the Hellcat. Also, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen all the stuff that we've been doing with this car right here, you can go back on the channel and find the GTO playlist. There is all types of videos on there with this car. Everything from suspension to dropping the engine in to interior, gauges, uh, just about everything you can think of. I think we're gonna go ahead and pop off the rear tires fast, beat in the wheel wells a little bit because these 275 6015s are rubbing a little bit back here. So we're gonna go ahead and take care of that. Also gonna hook up a fuel pressure gauge so that when we do take this thing out on the road here in a little bit, we can see if our fuel pressure is dropping off or if uh, we've got something else going on. We also bumped the rev limiter up to like 6500 and I'll shift around 55. For now, uh, that's what the tuner wants. We want to see if raising the rev limiter gets rid of that breakup issue. We don't know if maybe we were touching the rev limiter a little bit early. So I'm going to go ahead and get the water out of this thing. I'll jack it up, start beating those fenders in, and uh, then we'll get all set up and we'll go ahead and take this thing for a ride here in a few. Hey right, guys, I popped the tire off quick. You can see right here, this is where it was hitting the very first time we put these tires on when we brought it over for the alignment. And uh, we did the alignment basically um, accordingly, or according to where we were rubbing, we kind of adjusted to counter that to try to move the wheel out because we have camber um, adjustments. We have an adjustable front bushing there. But uh, we did that so that we could at least drive it and start tuning on it. So now we're gonna go in here. You can see where it's been rubbing all right here. So we're gonna see what we can do about that and see what other uh, clearance we can make here sure. so we'll see what we can do and uh, get this thing back on Custom. we've got the rear tires back on it we went ahead and used some uh, undercoating where we beat it in more so uh, not only just to protect it but more so so we can see if the tire touches again it'll wipe the paint off then we'll know where we're touching and if there's anything we can do about it i went ahead and mixed up some coolant put some of that in and i also took the gauge that was on our regulator off and went ahead and put this fitting on so that we can hook up my matco fuel pressure tester we'll either if it'll reach i'll put it in through the passenger window or if I have to, I'll tape it right to the windshield. I don't really care. So we've got that taken care of. We're gonna go ahead and top this system off, uh, burp it a couple times, whatever. And then we should be ready to flash another tune to it and take this thing for another ride and see what we can do with it. Uh, if everything's going good and the fuel pressure doesn't drop off, stuff like that, I think we're gonna be good to make a hit and then we'll turn around, turn the meth system on and make another hit using the meth injection. So let's see what happens. All right guys, so I'm not 100% sure where we left off with this thing. Uh, over the last few days or week or so since we've messed with it 
we actually had to take a ride out to New Jersey and bring the Hellcat to the Hub Dyno. If you haven't seen it already, make sure to go back and check out that video. Thing made some really good power. Thing's super rowdy. But now that we're back at home, we're going to start working on the GTO again. Try to get some of this tuning figured out and get it dialed in. So as you can see, I've got my laptop hooked up right now. We're just finishing up right in the file right now. We just checked our little uh, makeshift fuel pressure gauge for leaks. That seems to be good. So once this gets set here, once it goes through writing, uh, I'm going to go ahead and set up a camera and we'll go take this thing for a ride. didn't drop it stayed at three and a half four the whole time uh, no it went up oh okay when, good when you let off the shift and shit the lowest she dropped was three and a half that should be on even with each other now so that's a plus a mile or two. that's definitely a plus but Still got oil pressure, that's always a good it's sign. Okay, yeah, in between here. shifts it should yeah. drop. So is so every any time I was on the throttle it was going up? Yeah. Perfect. That's what we want to see. All right, guys, so that's pretty much going to wrap up the tuning on this thing. I mean, it's a pretty basic, somewhat budget LS build with the uh, Pro Charger BTR Stage 3 cam, some other little goodies, but this thing is flying. We were making right around 15, 16 PSI with this little D1SC completely maxed out. I think the recommended RPM for this blower is right around 62,000 RPM. We're spinning it up to 74,000, so we are definitely way over speeding this thing. Uh, over the winter, I might keep an eye out for like an F1A or something like that and sell off this D1 and really push this stock bottom end and see what we can do with it. I mean, we didn't get the rings or anything and knock on wood, this thing's just taking it and it's loving it. Uh, it's absolutely flying. I couldn't be happier with uh, Ed as a tuner. I will link him in the description below like I did in the last video. He has been absolutely phenomenal to work with and he has really gotten this thing moving. Um, sadly, it's starting to become winter time very quickly here in New England, so I'm not sure if we're going to be able to make it to the track before everybody closes up for the winter. We will definitely try. Worst case scenario, if we can't make it to the track, I will definitely get this thing out and try to do some playing around with the draggy and see what we can do with it. So make sure to stay tuned for that. I'm super excited to see what we can do. Uh, the Speedo is still not accurate, so I can't exactly gauge um, going off of that but it definitely feels like it's flying. It blows right through the gears. And this thing, uh, honestly, it sounds pretty cool. I think it sounds awesome. This is the first centrifugal car I've had. So super happy about that. 
Now we've got a turbo vehicle, a centrifugal supercharged vehicle, and a root style blower car. So that's pretty cool. Um, as always guys, I appreciate you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell. That way you get notified whenever we post a video with the GTO, the Duramax, or the Hellcat, and we will catch you on the next one.